you're welcome to see through glass. Now, if you saw last week's video, you'll know that in the last 12 months or so, I put 8,000 miles on my GT3. But you'll also know that I'm, I'm not scared of putting miles on cars. And actually, that's not that much when you consider with my first 911, the Carrera T, I did over 30,000 miles in the first year. Okay, that was during Drive the World, my big round the world trip. But still, in general, I do like to really use my cars. And actually, if I think back to the Carrera T, it was such an amazing year that at the end of that trip, my plan was to always go and order the 992 generation Carrera T when it launched. But, but then I got offered a slot on one of these and I chose this instead. Today, we're gonna find out well, if that was the right choice. I think we all know it probably was, but I'm gonna be getting behind the wheel of a 992 generation Carrera T for the first time to see what it's all about, how it's improved from the previous generation, whether it can still be considered a, a baby GT3. So as I was just saying, 8,000 miles in this car, and about 5,000 miles in the 360 and countless miles in other cars, it will come as no surprise for you to hear me say that I spend a lot of time at petrol stations and therefore quite a lot of money on petrol. And as this is my business, I really need to keep kind of track of all those fuel costs. But I cannot tell you how many times my accountants have sent me very angry emails because, well, I've forgotten a fuel receipt in the glove box of a press car, or I've been rushing when filming and just shoved a receipt in my pocket. It's got so scrunched up you can't read it. And yeah, that's not great. Which is why I was super happy when Shell recently got in touch and told me about the Shell Fleet app, which allows you to download VAT invoices Hallelujah! Finally, I'm not going to get angry emails from my accountants. Well, I might, but it'll be about other things, not about fuel. <laughs> on top of that, the Shell Fleet app also gives you discounts on V-Power and standard fuel, but you can also well, manage up to 30 different vehicles in your fleet. I'm not Shmi 150. I mean, I have like two or three cars in my garage at any one time, uh, but still, it's a lot to keep track of, and this app will allow me to do all of that. Essentially, making life as a small business owner who fills up the car a lot, so much easier. So, if you're like me and you're filling up your car a ton and you need to really keep track of that for various reasons, go and check out the Shell Fleet app. Right then, time for me to go and find this Carrera T. Uh, you will join me in a few days. Once I've kind of got used to it, I can start to share some of my thoughts. Now you might think for a GT3 owner, stepping backwards into what is essentially a base 911 Carrera, well there wouldn't be too much to be excited about. But you're wrong! <laughs> Ever since I collected this car from Porsche GB, I've been absolutely buzzing. I don't know if it's the yellow paintwork or the fact that it's been super sunny the last few days, but every time I've looked out of my bedroom window I've thought, oh my god, I need to get in that thing and go for a drive. And the last 100 miles or so I've done, just to kind of familiarise myself with the car, have been absolutely mega. This thing is so different from my GT3. In fact, so different that I've been trying not to compare them in my mind. Instead, I've been trying to kind of go back in time to when I owned my 991.2 Carrera T and see how much of a step forward this car is. We'll come back to that, I guess, later in the video. But what I really need to say is that initial impressions of this thing are very, very good. Now some of you might remember, I actually did a 2,000 mile trip in a base 911 Carrera a few years ago, drove it down to Austria, and I absolutely loved it. It just showed me how good the 992 generation 911 is. In fact, I enjoyed it so much that since then, I've said if I was to go and buy a 911 tomorrow, I'd either get the base level entry car, i.e. the 911 Carrera, or the top end GT product. I personally feel like the Carrera S, the Carrera GTS are less desirable than they once were just because the standard car is so good. However, I did have a couple of complaints, one of which is the fact you can no longer spec a manual gearbox. How can I help you? You, you can't. Uh, you can no longer spec a manual gearbox in the base 911 Carrera, uh, and there were just a few other sort of enthusiast options which you're not allowed to tick. 
I now realise that's because Porsche had the Carrera T up their sleeve. This is the base 911 Carrera with those juicy options, meaning you get a really pure driving experience. It's a bit of an old school analog driving experience. This is not about drag strips, it's not about lap time, it's not about horsepower battles. It's just about driving pleasure. It's coming here and just being involved, getting a direct result from your inputs and getting a smile on your face. Honestly, I never knew 380 odd horsepower could be so fun. It's slippery today, people. Anyway, the fun can continue later because it's coming up to 12.30, which I think means it's time for lunch. Now, I've been a massive fan of Deus ever since I first discovered it back in the early 2010s. You've probably seen me wear their stuff over the years. Uh, they even gifted us actually a load of clothes during Drive the World. So it seems fitting that as I'm back at a Carrera T, I go and visit their first official UK location. Uh, located on the south coast near Bournemouth, Deus Lodge is a, is a restaurant, bar, shop, hotel. It feels like a little bit more. Uh, it's tucked away, not in the most obvious location, up on a hill above a beach. Uh, the coffee was great, the food was banging, and they had all the Deus merch you could ever want. I will 100% go back to this place. Uh, before I went off in search of some more driving roads though, I thought I'd pop down to the seaside for a quick ice cream. I have to say, I am really digging the way this car looks. It's probably because I'm a fan of the 992 Generation 911 in general, and that is just very much a 992 Generation 911. It's in its unfussiest form. There's no big rear wing like my GT3, no aggressive diffuser like the GT3 Touring, no ducktail like the Sport Classic, no side inlets like the Turbo, etc, etc. That car doesn't even have the Sport Design Kit. It's just letting the sort of original design speak for itself, and for me, that helps it hark back to, well, previous generations of the 911. This keeps that iconic silhouette. The Carrera T does sit on slightly larger wheels, 20 inch and 21 inch rather than 19 and 20 inch. It helps look a bit more aggressive, also sits a bit lower, so it's just got some presence. But I do remember with the red 911 Carrera I took to Austria, I just think it's, a, it's just a good looking thing. And yeah, I'll mention that colour one more time because the yellow in the sunshine, oh, it's a vibe. Anyway, look at me living my British seaside life. It's about four degrees and I'm tucking into an ice cream. What a cliche I am. It's a beautiful sunset, but unfortunately I don't really know this area. Somewhere south of Shaftesbury, which is in the southwest of England. And uh, yeah, I've been looking for a sort of good road to drive, or at least a beautiful lookout point where I can park up the car and share some of my thoughts, but oh my god, where are we now? We're in some kind of flood. Yeah, the roads, the roads are super tight and bumpy and covered in ice in parts. I keep coming across farm traffic and it's just not worked out. So I think I'm gonna quit whilst I'm ahead head home and then we'll get up early and head out again tomorrow. But before I do that, I just want to touch on one thing. I said earlier, there's probably not much point in comparing this car with my GT3. They are so different and I stand by that. I mean, the engine alone, but the front end, the way that my car steers and handles, is just night and day from this thing. Uh, but there's so many other parts. However, it doesn't mean this thing is any less enjoyable. And controversially, I also want to ask the question is, well, could this actually be a more pleasurable car to drive on UK roads? Given what I just said about the area I'm in being super night, super tight and bumpy and icy, well, my GT3 would have been in a tree by now. But this thing, you can still just about <laughs> enjoy it. But, but also, whilst they are very different, I do still think you can call a Carrera T a baby GT3, or at least an entry-level GT3, because I'm very well aware that not everyone can walk into a Porsche dealership and buy a GT3. Most people have to choose from the, from the standard 911 range, which the Carrera T is part of. When you look at that standard range, at least for the 992 generation, the Carrera T is really the kind of most, well, driver-focused feels like an aggressive thing to say, but the one aimed at real enthusiasts. 
because they've pushed the 911 on so much that it's kind of closer to a, an Aston Martin DB12 or Bentley Continental these days. It's so comfortable, it's got great sound system, fantastic infotainment, wonderful automatic PDK gearboxes. It's just a lovely car to live with. But I've always said maybe less of a sports car because of that, more of a GT. Whilst this thing is a through and through sports car. It is just so easy to control, so predictable. It's the right amount of power. The steering, whilst it's not as razor sharp as my GT3, it's so good and progressive and, oh, I don't have enough good things to say about this car. It is so much fun. So much so that I cannot wait to get back out in it tomorrow. And yeah, on a day like today, where it's freezing cold and I'm in the UK, I don't know if I would have been able to exploit as much as I've been able to exploit in this car as I would have done in my GT3. The GT3 is for Europe and the big twisty mountain roads and the racetrack. This thing has so much to offer on a day-to-day -day basis. So much so that I actually sent an uh, email to Porsche Guildford being like, is it mad to have two 911s? I don't know why I'm asking them. They're obviously going to say, no, not at all. Please order one. But yeah. Oh. It's been a very good few days. I've just checked, done just over 250 miles. So we've got another 250 miles to do tomorrow. I want to do at least 500 so I can really sum up, well, what this car's all about, how much it's moved on from the previous generation. Well, I guess whether I want one alongside my GT3. No, no, that would, that would be ridiculous. But it is fun that you can do a bit of slidey stuff, even though, what says traction? Oh no, I'm in traction sport. Anyway, well, look, the sun is getting low. Time to wrap things up. I'll see you in the morning. Well, good morning, everybody. Welcome to day four for me with this car. Uh, it's another very chilly day, but not as beautifully sunny as it was yesterday. Uh, I wanna update you on my drive home last night, which was about, I guess, an hour and a half, and mainly on the motorway, which is where this car's seven-speed manual gearbox kind of came into its own. Uh, like all non-GT department manual 911s, this car gets a seven-speed, not a six-speed. Now, when you're on the sort of twisty roads, the back roads, the seventh gear kind of makes no sense. But actually, it's an awkward gear in general because the gear stick kind of rests between third and fourth gear. So if you're ever in seventh gear coming down, you often find yourself going into fourth, not sixth. But when you're out on the motorway, seventh gear is fantastic because it's a proper, legit cruising gear. Here I am right now doing 53 miles an hour and like 1200 RPM for the entire journey back last night, which was, yeah, heavy traffic motorway mileage. I just sat in this seventh gear, mind my own business, and I got 27 mpg, which I think is pretty good from a 911 sort of driver's car. So yeah, I, I don't I don't knock the seven speed manual, and it's not as sort of notchy and mechanical as the GT3 box, which is so rewarding, but it is still a lovely gearbox, and I do love these manual Porsche gearboxes. And to be honest, you should only ever be getting a Carrera T with a manual gearbox. If you're thinking of getting one of these with a PDK, don't. I learned with my 991.2 generation Carrera T, it's kind of pointless. We had to go PDK because my wife doesn't really like driving manuals and we were sharing a lot of the driving during that big drive the world adventure. But I think it's one of the main reasons why I didn't hold on to my old Carrera T. If it was manual, maybe, maybe I would have loved it a little bit more. And realistically, the manual gearbox is what sets this car apart from not only the 911 Carrera, but the rest of the range. It, what, it's what makes it this kind of real enthusiast 911. Yes, you can get a manual Carrera S. Yes, you can get a manual GTS. But those cars somehow feel very different. They don't feel as enjoyable or, I mean, I'm going to use that word again, pure. I wonder if there's going to be a counter in this video of how many times I've said pure. <laughs> it is almost the best way to sum this thing up. Anyway, yeah, another positive experience with this car yesterday. It's, it's turning out to be quite multifaceted uh, in its nature. But anyway, another bit of a motorway cruise this morning, so I'm going to sit back, enjoy my heated seat, the sound system, move on to our next destination. 
destination was Octane Collection. I had a meeting with the team there to discuss some plans for the year ahead, but it turns out they have a ton of 911s in stock at the moment. Everything from air-cooled race cars right through to 4-litre RSs. So it was interesting to see what else you could buy for the same money as a new Carrera T, because the car I've been driving costs 113 grand as spec. Now, that's a pretty sensible spec. You can easily go well beyond that. You really shouldn't with a T, but based on the previous gen, people do seem to get a bit carried away with these cars. The thing is, if you start looking at around 120 grand for a Carrera T, well, you could easily get a 997 generation GT3. Heck, I think you could even squeeze into a 991.2 generation GT3, which then makes the whole Carrera T argument a little hard. But what I'm trying to say is that like all new cars, the T's got quite expensive. But I guess that's the way of the world now. You can go back and forth on new versus used all the time. But I think the point I'll leave you with is that you could probably buy two used 991.2 generation Carrera T's these days for the price of one new one. Now, despite the fact that the Carrera T is no longer a sub 100K car, I gotta be honest and tell you, over the last few days, I've really been trying to justify having one of these alongside my GT3. Yeah, that's how much I've been enjoying driving it around these UK roads. The thing is, I can't really justify it. I mean, firstly, as I've said a few times in this video, the GT3 is the better car. But also, whilst they're very different, the makeup of my car and how I would spec a Carrera T, well, just a bit too similar. My GT3 has got comfort seats, manual gearbox, and now rear seats. And I would spec a Carrera T to have comfort seats, a manual gearbox, and rear seats. So yeah, I'm not sure I'd be getting as, as many points of differentiation as I would potentially like. However, if I had a GT3 with a PDK gearbox, the bucket seats, and I kind of exclusively used it for track days and big European trips, oh my God, I would 100% want one of these as my daily. Because it is nigh on perfection as a daily sports car. For me, this ticks so many boxes. It's close to a 10 out of 10. I, I don't think it's put a foot wrong the whole time I've had it. And I've looked for any excuse to drive it. I've barely gone out of the thing the last four days. As I said right at the beginning, you might not have expected that considering that I now bloody own a GT3, almost the best that you get when it comes to modern day 911s. But this thing right at the bottom end of the range just has so much to offer. So, if you are considering a 992 generation 911, you really, whoa, whoa. <gasps> I nearly died, I nearly died. This made that car even better. Ah! Yeah, you have to look at one of these for that. What other 380 horsepower car wants to kill you constantly? It is incredibly greasy. <laughs> and I've still got these summer tires on. Okay, slow down a bit, Sam. But yeah, long story short, this is the one, this is the pick of the bunch. If it's not a GT product, get yourself a T. And if you are gonna do it, let me just make a few things very clear. You have to get the manual gearbox. There is absolutely no point in getting this car with the PDK. Because at that point, just get the standard 911 Carrera or find a load of cash and go buy yourself a GTS. It's really the only way to do it. On top of that, try and get the rear wheel steer because that will just enhance the kind of enthusiast or driver focused angle or, 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 or part of this car. After that, tick no other boxes. Genuinely, if you can keep the price as low as possible and therefore the weight also as low as possible, then I think you're gonna absolutely love and adore this thing. You're not gonna feel like you've been ripped off on unnecessary leathers and sound systems and whatever. It's just a car that you can get in and enjoy all the time. Because the 902 is just that brilliant. That's what I discovered with the standard Carrera at a base level with no options, which was the car I tested. It's just brilliant. And this, the T has just opened it up to be just that much better to drive. I will be so sad to give this thing back. It may mean that I stay alive because I have been trying to die the last few days, as you perhaps witnessed, but that's because it's so confidence-inspiring, this thing. It just doesn't feel like it's ever going to do anything that unpredictable, and even if it does, you can kind of correct it or figure it out. The T will remain the forever misunderstood and overlooked model in the 911 range. People just go, oh, what is the point in that? The point is, it's bloody ace. And yeah, if I was a much richer man, 
I would I would be ordering one. I would, but I'm not sure I could quite justify 115 grand on a car that in lots of ways is very similar to the one that I already have, and in some ways not as good. It's great, but it's it's not as good as the GT3. But it's very enjoyable out here. Okay, I'm probably repeating myself. Let's draw things to a close. I hope you've enjoyed the video. I will continue to fly the banner for the Carrera T. Subscribe now. Plenty more videos to come.